Hey guys, so welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's pretty late. It's 11.52. We're at the shop. We're finishing off a job. It is the 24th, so it's Christmas Eve. It's about to be Christmas Day. Um, I've just finished packing the trailer. I've loaded up all the presents. Look at all the prezzies. And there's more presents in here. So, yes, still at the shop. Finishing up a final few jobs because we're going away for a week. I always go to my mum and dad's for Christmas. We always take the Patriot trailer and obviously Old Boy. It fits all of us in there. We all have a sleeping spot because when my whole family comes to mum and dad's, it gets quite crowded. And they have enough land that we can just camp. So we camp. <laughs> it's like bougie camping. I've packed all the cars. And I've hooked up the trailer to Old Boy. Until the 76 gets like a bull bar or some kind of protection, uh, it's probably not going to be doing any like hectic road trips anytime soon. There's just a lot of kangaroos. I've hit one, one kangaroo, not in this car, but in my life. And Murphy's Law, if we take this on the highway and to my parents' property, with all the kangaroos will be hit, will be hit. They will all die. <laughs> Murphy's Law. That's what'll happen because we don't have a bull bar on this car. Oh, I've got to put Mars's stuff back in the dog box. Actually, that's what I've got to do. Um, so his bed obviously goes in there. Where are you going? He's stealing stuff. Back here. That we got to pack that. Come here, Maz. Maz, come here. Can I have that? Thank you. We need to pack this. It needs to go in the box. Having the Patriot is, is like changed everything. It's made everything so much more streamlined. Like, cause it just stays packed, right? And the fridge is already in there. The web is already in there. All of our camp gear is already in there. Bedding, everything is just ready to go. And my car can stay fairly empty. And I don't have to stress about packing camp gear the night before a trip. Anyway. <laughs> Are you excited to be working on Christmas Eve again? Isn't it Christmas Day? <laughs> yes, yes, it's Christmas Day. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, little boy. Man, I'm tired, huh? But I just cooked some nuggets. So, I'm gonna go eat those. And I'll see you guys in the morning on Christmas Day. Happy Christmas! Uh, so it is the next day. We are about to leave. This is like all our luggage in here. It goes back a fair way. But yeah, getting excited. Getting the Marzi boy. Where we going? Where we going, Baba? Hey? Are you coming? What are you doing? Free alarm clock. I don't think he knows you're here. Poke your head out, let me see what he does. Oh shit, you up there? I didn't see you there, sir. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just away. <laughs> A good boy. While I'm at mum and dad's I thought I would film a questions video because I've had this trailer now for a very long time. This is the X1N and you guys have lots of questions and so let's all put them in one video. It is ridiculously hot and sunny here. I'm trialing my new microphone in this video. Oh that's sweaty. I've <laughs> got it underneath my shirt hopefully that goes all right. Hey guys it's our uh, future Denny here. I'm currently editing this video that you're watching and I've just made the realization that even though I'm wearing that external mic, I didn't actually plug the receiver which sits on top of the camera into the camera. So this whole video was filmed on the microphone built into the camera. 
And that's why the cricket sound is so horrendous. <laughs> I've just been editing out cricket sounds going, why does my new microphone sound like absolute trash? And why is it so quiet? And what is going on? And I just realized, apologies <laughs> for that. But anyway, back to the video. So the X1N has been with us for a while now. The first trip was Fink. It, it's been a while. The X1N is like an upgrade to the X2. But the great thing is, is that it's pretty much the same size and weight, which matters because it's a slow boy. This is a slow, slow boy. The slightest change in towing weight um, or even weight in the back of old boy I like you can feel it anyone who drives an old diesel you will feel every kilogram of weight <laughs> the x1n is very similar in weight and dimensions to the x2 so it wasn't a big step up look there's prickles here sensitive weed magic leaves yeah so obviously I can feel every amount of weight there's a small amount of space on one side of the canopy and the rest is pretty much taken up. So anything large that we've got to carry or move around, trailer. And I don't want to keep all my camping gear. This has got like utensils, plates, like aerosols, cooking stuff, all Mars's stuff is in there and it just stays in there permanently. And this stays nice and light, as lightweight as this can be. So that is the huge advantage to this X1N that for me has been storage. <laughs> This has got all of our Christmas stuff in it at the moment. Watch all the plant people like freak out because I've got a fucking plant in here. It's fake plant, don't worry. I like making things my own. Obviously my car is very unique and that's what I like about these is that it's, it's open to what you want to do with it and you're not restricted to like doing one thing like your cutlery can only go in this drawer because you can't put anything else in there because they've divided it so segmentally. Segmentally, that's the word. One of the biggest questions people ask is why the X1N. They obviously have the X3 and um, a heap of other trailers with different kind of configurations. The X3 is probably the biggest where it's the one you actually like walk up and inside. And I think that's what most people think a camper trailer is. And they get confused with the X1N because they're like, where do you go inside? And it's like, well, you don't go inside. All our stuff is inside. <laughs> I've said this in the walkthrough video, but versatility. I love the versatility of owning a ute for the last 12 years because I can just do whatever I want. You want to carry this? I can carry it. You want to move this around here? I can do that. This is the same thing. We use this for work and play pretty much. So it comes to our track days and it is our shade. We cook food for lunch halfway through the day. It carries like the fridge, all our cold drinks and everything like that. It carries all our weight scales, it carries all the cones, there's a lot of cones, they're big cones. <laughs> like you just couldn't put them in any other camper trailer because they're all just made for one thing, like camping, that's it. And it's like, I, like that's cool if that's all you do, but my life is so not just camping, like I am working a lot of the time. So that is why this trailer is amazing and it's got the barbecue in there and it's got the fridge in there and it's got storage space and it's got the power to charge all of our tools that we use and then I don't even take out all the camping gear when we do that that's how much space there is I can keep all of our camp gear in here and still go to work and do work and then go camping <laughs> look the x3 is amazing I do not does not have the capabilities to tow one kilogram more it is right on the limit, the X1N, so I think empty, look I'll put the stats up, but so it's pretty lightweight, it sits really nicely behind the cruiser, so like that's as close to the side of the car, and it sits like behind it. So that's probably the most asked question is why the X1N, and that's the thing, people are like, oh mine does, you know, mine does this and, and mine does that, and it's like, I don't need fancy stuff, I just need versatility, I need it to adapt. I have a very weird lifestyle. I don't think there's many people that use their camper trailers for camping and full-time working. That's a very unique thing. Probably the second most asked question I get, the price. But they are not a cheap trailer. What's considered cheap or affordable to some is not going to be to others and that's perfectly fine. I obviously own 
a 10 grand car. The thing I think people think is they're like, you don't need all of this. And it's like, no, you don't. You don't need any of this to go camping. You just need to be outside and that's it. They're not the most expensive trailer on the market, but they're not cheap. And I understand why people say that they are overpriced because they visually look just at what's here and they don't see behind the scenes. And seeing behind the scenes, a lot of the work we do, we go to businesses that manufacture in Australia and you start to get like a really eye-opening experience about why things are the price they are. I, as an Australian tradie, know how much I should be getting paid per hour. <laughs> I know the cost of electricity in Australia. I know the cost of renting commercial properties in Australia. Uh, I know the cost of raw material in Australia. None of those cheap Australian manufacturing is expensive. It's, it's cheaper and easier to outsource to overseas. Um, and it's becoming more and more accessible. <laughs> and I'm seeing more and more companies that began as Australian manufacturers move into overseas because it's cheaper and easier and faster. Um, they can get more products out to customers. And it, I don't want to say it's a cop out because that's just the way the world is. But it is not easy, cheap or practical at all to manufacture in Australia. That is the reality of it. If you are buying Australian made, you're like genuinely keeping things running here. This trailer is made in Australia. I watched how many people put their hands on every single trailer and how many of those are qualified tradespeople. That just blows my mind from start to end how these trailers come out of the Gold Coast. And that's not a cheap process. <laughs> when people compare them to products that are manufactured overseas, it's very it's hard it's hard to do that it's hard to make that comparison okay next question is have you had any issues with it a lot of people want to know problems and like i get that because you can stand here and say how great something is but like i want to know what's what's the problems like tell me the issues and uh i respect that so let's go look at them <laughs> major issue and i do i need to fix this so if anybody remembers the fink video there was like mad corrugations let's just put a little clip here so we can all remember Anyway, we were driving back and forth that road like every few days because there was no service. And so we're going into town for supplies. We're going in town to watch the race. Um, so we're on that road a lot. This latch, right? It's an oversettle and it's like had enough. <laughs> and so it's let go. And the hinges that this awning sits on have just obviously taken the weight of the awning. And now because it's not fully latched down, I've got new brackets and new uh, extension arms for this awning to go on here. If it's not broke, don't touch it. Because I, I'm just envisioning this being a pain, right? I'm going to drill these rivets out, probably snap some drill bits. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be intense, right? And at the moment, it's, it's fine. Like, it can't actually come off. We've secured it, so it's fine. Um, another big question that people asked was, um, like, things that you love. Like, what, what makes this trailer? And I feel like I covered that a lot. Obviously, versatility, storage, great for us. The Dometic on the trailer has been awesome. I like this rooftop so much that we wanted to put it on... 76. This is an optional extra, but I love this and I want to show you guys. I didn't get to set up the rooftop in the walkthrough video, so I will show you now. It's very cool. Done. Now, there is a little stay pole. Okay, so this is the Dometic. I'm 165. So I still got a bit of space up here. Got three windows. So airflow is good. Got your pockets. Pocket up there. And you have these pockets here which roll down for your boots. 
thing. Put your shoes in there. It's lightweight. Two people can lift it off this rack. It's quick. <laughs> it's like up and down, done, sorted. There's a fair amount of bedding in here. Swag blanket, that's on my shop. This is the throw blanket, that's also on the shop. This is like those grandma blankets, thick. <laughs> so it's not the thickest mattress, but obviously with all these blankets, it's actually quite comfy. And the pillow, and I'm gonna put the ladder back in here as well. Put the ladder in and then we can close them up. Down. Okay, now I'm gonna go put the bag back on. You're gonna help mine with the work? So that is it, that's all done. Another question that people do ask is, does the trailer hinder me off-road? Majority of my camping is either river camping and forward driving, soft river sand or rocks, or beach driving on like tidal beaches. So it'll change every day. But I doubt I even have 50 horsepower at the wheels. Like not even joking, that if I got 50 horsepower out of a dyno on these tires, I'd, I'd be pretty happy. <laughs> so very little power, however, the 1HZ uh, drives like a tractor and it will keep turning over. It will uh, burn out the clutch before it'll st ever stall itself. It is just, just keeps going, <laughs> even when it probably shouldn't keep going. I have to drive differently in sandy forward driving. Regardless if I'm towing, I have to plan when I'm driving with other people and people don't know where they're going. They make it, they're like, oh, let's just decide when we get there. No, there's no deciding when we get there. I've got to know where I'm going. If there's a U-turn I've got to conduct, if the camp is up a thing, I'm going to need like a one kilometer run up for that. Forward driving on the beach in an old slow diesel, you have to, you have to see the future, right? <laughs> I'm like constantly thinking ahead when I'm forward driving on the beach and the trailer honest to god it's like I know it's there but I'm doing the same thinking planning out kind of things I would do even if it wasn't. The track is actually really close to what the 75 is anyway and because the 75 has such fat tires that the trailer track width is like just falling into those lines anyway so that's really good. So yeah, it doesn't really bother me too much. The hitch is the DO35 hitch, so when I am actually doing articulated kind of driving, it allows for like a heap of movement. It's kind of like a universal joint for your hitch um, in the way that it allows the drawbar to move independently of the car. It's good in the way that the trailer's not necessarily being like dragged along by the car, because obviously a car and your trailer can never be in the same spot at the same time. So it allows the trailer to take the same line the car did independently, rather than being dragged along at the same level the car is. So somebody asked about suspension as well. This is all airbags. So that's the airbag there. We've got dual shocks, fancy boy but I don't feel nothing in my car. <laughs> so if there was ever a change between springs or airbags, people asking about the comfort wise, I, just, I don't know, I don't know, I can't tell you. <laughs> you can see the cars at a different angle to what the trailer is, um, but you can level the trailer out, which is a huge advantage. Like that, like sleeping on an angle is just not, not, not it. We go. Yeah, so they're about the same, so it's not too bad, but we've got to turn the blower on, we've got to turn them on. Okay, hey guys, so I'm back in Townsville. Plan was to do this out camping with this full setup, tent up, awning out, all the jazz. However, <laughs> it is raining. So that plan didn't quite work out. However, I did finally remember to plug in my microphone. So hopefully the audio on this section is a little bit better than the other stuff. And there's no crickets here. Lots of mozzies, but no crickets. So it should sound better. 
How's the awning in bad weather? So here's some images of when we went to Mount Fox. It was actually raining the entire time. Um, we ended up leaving a day early. And the great thing about that awning uh, from PCOR is that it has little tie downs in the middle of the poles. So you can tie down the middle so the water runs off rather than pools on top. And that was super handy when it was raining. Take your canopy setup away. Would the trailer be suitable for camping out of for a week off grid? 100% but I would opt for a bigger inverter if that was the case only because I'm just accustomed now to the 2000 watt inverter that's in the 75 and if I didn't have that there would be a number of things that I couldn't <laughs> run like my coffee machine, my air fryer. I just love it eh? Like I love technology, I love uh, portable power. Is there anything missing in it? Not overly, the only thing I wish it did have, non-perishable goods I keep in here and there's not particularly an ideal spot to put all that. Don't know what the solution is, but something better for pantry because there's a few items that just don't fit in that big storage box that has my sources in it now. I've kind of got to like lay some things over. Something that I probably didn't mention for things that I'm not super fan of. The rear, obviously the huge storage box. The door for that is one door and you can't reach very far down to grab stuff. Like for me to reach back here, I get like not even a meter in and it's quite a deep box. So for me to get anything out, I've got to walk around the side and then there's this cable here. However, I stand by that this part of the box is the most beneficial part it has a ridiculously good departure angle. Um, are, you, are you right? Are you good? This tailgate, as you, if you guys look at it from the back, you can see it looks like it hangs down a lot lower and it might be susceptible to getting hit and getting knocks. However, underneath you can see that it's actually not that much lower than the structural part of the trailer. These beams here and the lights have got a fairly girthy amount of protection there. Alrighty guys, I'm going to end this video here. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any further questions, please ask down below. I'm hoping to take the Patriot to the four wheel drive shows in North Queensland this year. If you want to get an up close look at one that's got like 10, 15,000 kilometers put on it, come and have a chat to me then. We are going back to Fink this year, hopefully in the 76 series. So it'll be a bit of a smoother ride than the 75 but again, in the Patriot trailer. So I'm very excited for that and very excited to see if we can actually do 130 Ks on the road to Fink this year. If you like this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Comments are what mean the most to me. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you in our next video, which is hopefully going to be a four driving and camping video. Hopefully it's not raining. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. as it seems the twinkle in your eyes the way that time slows down when